Oh, right to the chest. All right, here we go. So let's go over this reading from yesterday. The battle. Well, no, not the battle. Siege of Stalingrad. Okay, I posted that yesterday for you. Hopefully everybody turned it in. Actually, I know some didn't because I put the grades in right before class started. So let's go over it. Number one, what is the current name of Leningrad? How long did the siege of Leningrad take? And how many estimated city residents died? There you go. So what do we have for number one? 40? Oh, hold up. You tell me what to do, huh? The current name of uh, Leningrad is St. Petersburg. Uh, the attack of Leningrad lasted about 872 days and about 1 million people died. Awesome. Good job. Good job. So they changed it to St. Petersburg, obviously named after Lenin, I mean, uh, founder of here of the Soviet Union, okay, that led this Bolshevik revolution, right, during World War One, towards the end of World War One, And uh, they changed the name in 1991. Wow. Crazy stuff. Right at the end of the Soviet Union, once it failed, they had the city vote on it, and they changed it to St. Petersburg. All right. So how many estimated city residents died? Forty? What was the number again? Oh, around a million. Estimated around a million. That's a lot, a lot of deaths. A lot of it because of lack of resources, food, material, and just sources of energy. Okay, like fuel, okay, coal, whatever it might be, uh, oil, to heat the homes because it was so cold there. And we even talked about it the other day. They're even mixing in sawdust with bread to try to fill their stomachs. Oh, can you imagine? Crazy, crazy. All right, two. Why did Nazi troops decide to not fully take over the city of Leningrad? What city were they aiming for? Go ahead, Griffin. Um, they didn't uh, fully take over Leningrad because they thought they were going to lose some of the troops and resources. And uh, I didn't get it what city they were aiming for. Okay, yep. So you got the part one right. Uh, they thought that would just be too risky. That would be, uh, be a loss of a lot of soldiers and resources, materials, if they try to take over Leningrad. So they decide to encircle it, right? Try to strangle it, cut it off, cut them off of all resources coming in, and uh, really just force the city to, I guess you could say, surrender, right? Okay. And uh, what city were they aiming for? Go ahead, Troy. Moscow. Moscow. Good job, right? Good job. So with Operation Barbarossa, they're moving closer and closer to Moscow, the capital city. right? And we'll talk about that more when we reconvene back after, uh, obviously, when we get back from break. It was cut off from the city, which caused over one million deaths. So I kind of went over this one already. Kiara? Yeah, lack of resources, right? So once once they uh, surrounded the city, they are bombarding it with artillery and the Luftwaffe laying waste to the city. But for the most part, many of the people died from really just lack of food, famines, starvation, okay? And uh, without any types of sources of energy, like I mentioned, people froze to death. Sad, sad stuff. <clears throat> All right, four. What did the Soviets turn to for food when food supplies were cut off? What happened to the bodies once the ground became too frozen to bury the bodies? What do you got, Serene, for this one? Um, number four. Yeah, number four. Um, the Soviets mixed sawdust with bread and made food, and they ate each other. And um, at some point, the, at one point, they would have to call the bodies up in the streets and see how they eventually went fire. Yeah, yeah, good job, good job. So with that. And we, we talked about the story with the sawdust, you know, mixing in with the bread, okay, killing horses, dogs, cats, rodents, mice, whatever they could find really to eat. And even humans, cannibalism, right? Sad, terrible, terrible thing, especially when these people were shut off really from the rest of the world, cut off of any type of food and resources. And uh, they were cut off for about 900 days. It's unbelievable. So that being said, the bodies, what do you do with them? The ground was frozen. You can't dig it up and bury them. So like I meant, like Serene mentioned, stack them alongside the streets. In uh, many cases, burning them. Obviously not getting the proper burial for your loved ones, your, your friends. Uh, obviously would be heartbreaking. 
So the morale of the, the Soviets here, Leningrad, probably lower than ever. Unbelievable. All right, five. What was one positive from the harsh winter in Russia? What could the Soviets then do? When did the German control of Leningrad end? Troy, what do you have here? Yeah, good. Good job. And when did the uh, German control around Leningrad end? Yeah, good job. Good job. So 1941 is when this occurred, around three years. All right. Uh, the Germans had a strict strangle, right, strangle hold around Leningrad. And yeah, one of the benefits, I guess you could say, was when the rivers, the lakes froze over. This allowed for transportation of supplies, food, sources of heat to uh, obviously aid the people in Leningrad. OK, so I guess you could say that was one benefit. Still not great. Great. All right. So we're at six here. Describe Anna. Andrevna's perspective of the siege of Leningrad. Jeffrey, what do you have, man? A lot of people starved to death. They got to the point where different buildings were turned into hospitals to try to give people some sort of sense of relief. And even to this day, people are still trying to recover the weight loss that they lost in the siege of Leningrad. All right, yeah. So she described like her perspective of the event and how even walking through the street, she had to step over dead bodies and try to avoid stepping on these bodies that were laying all across the streets. Okay, there's something out of like a horror movie and uh, obviously affected these people from here on out towards the end of the war and even the rest of their life uh, with this lack of food and uh, malnutrition and causes caused a lot of psychological issues for these people even after the war was over. All right, so this wasn't just an event that occurred for three years. It ended there. No, this lasted for really people's lives and uh, you know, even children seeing this going on around them uh, affected them for the rest of their lives as well. All right. Good job. Good job. She really talked about a lot of the famine and okay, a lot of the hunger, a lot of the death and uh, just really how this was a horror movie. Seven. Explain members of the staff, of the Architects Institute perspective of the siege of Leningrad. What do you have for this one here? Kira, what do you have? I said that they were kind of grateful that they had something to distract them, and uh, they kind of helped, ended up helping with some of the dead bodies. Yeah, yeah, good job, good job. So when the Black Aid was broken down, obviously they were really happy, and uh, they, they they tried their best to try to help these people, these citizens of, of Leningrad, with you know maybe disposing of some of these bodies, and Obviously, eventually, when some of these supplies would come in from the Allied powers, trying to help them out as much as possible. Good, good. All right, eight. Finally, last one here. Describe Major Lozak's perspective of an officer of the Red Army during the siege of Leningrad. What do you have here for this one, Gracie? Um, like I said, he had to give his rations to his parents when they would have died during this. He would have, he was so exhausted. About having food, he would have to walk for a while and then sit down because his body was so weak. And he saw so many people just collapse on the sidewalk from being hungry and tired. Nobody ever smiled. And he said that was very good. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine that a world without any type of entertainment, obviously living in a morbid state for huh, for three years, right? Seeing dead bodies laying around everywhere. The stench of it was probably terrible. And uh, just knowing that this event probably will never end, that this is going to last. Who knows until the German army would eventually be pushed back in 1944. And uh, for many of these people, this would live with them for the rest of their life. Okay. I just couldn't imagine living in that, that, that type of lifestyle. Okay. This just goes to show the siege of Leningrad was really brutal. One of the most impactful events when it comes to uh, just thinking of it as a terrible, terrible event. And uh, not many people hear about that, that since it's in the Soviet union, really, United States didn't hear about this story too much. Troy, I saw you put there at the bottom. He talked to this one boy who almost drove him crazy. What was that all about? Do you remember? From the reading? How do you almost drive him crazy? You can't you can't remember? Oh, okay. All right. 
I just saw you put that down there. I was just seeing what so you, see what you had for about it. But obviously, it would drive anybody to lose their mind. Uh, seeing this every single day, not knowing when hope is going to kind of come around and save them, when maybe the Soviets would push the German control out of, of Leningrad, around Leningrad, and if the Allied powers were ever going to come to their safety uh, as a savior for them. So that being said, they never knew when it was going to end. Okay, living a life literally like hell. All right. Is there any questions on that, the reading? So if you forgot to turn it in, you didn't turn it in. Hopefully you filled it out as we went through it and you turned it in. I'll give you some points. All right. So bell ringer for today. Real quick. And this one is what? Last one of the week. Three of them we should have, right? I'll come around and check them in here. For those of you at home, please submit it. Turn it in. I'll give you credit for it. Describe the siege of Leningrad. Did the German army fully take over the city? What occurred? There you go. So just summarizing what we talked about. Obviously, what the reading had to say. Three, do you think Mega Godzilla is going to be like an Iron Man? Can fly around? Can you imagine that? Fly around? Just like this huge robot flying around of Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, if there's a B in there. I tell you what, if you ruin this for me, if you give it out spoilers, I oh, you're getting a zero on everything. Everything the whole way through. What is the name of the B? Ah, oh, no one knows. Oh, it's just stabbing everybody. It's, Stinger. Oh, I don't know. The one video, when the movie video, the trailer, it looks like Godzilla standing over top of him, screaming in his face. Did you see that? Uh, well, it's like right at the end, Godzilla's like screaming, ah, and then Kong screams back at him. So probably like pushes his leg off from the trailer. No. <laughs> No, you have a writing assignment here soon. I think the Colin 8 has it. It's open. It's open. It's open. Yes, yes. Um, I'm just going to watch it at home, HBO Max. With sushi. Yes. Oh, what's that? I have no one to go with. No, I tried. I want to go to Seals Grove. A couple of my buddies were going to go see it, but... Oh, will you? <laughs> yeah. You want to go with this loser? You just said. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'll email you. <laughs> I'll, I'll send a private message on Google Classroom. Hey, what are we going? <laughs> Outside your house. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lily comes out. <laughs> He's sleeping. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's actually really accurate. Yeah. yeah. All right, describe the siege of Leningrad. Did the German army fully take over the city. What occurred? So we just went over this through the reading, but it's good to know it and a good study tool for you. We have this upcoming assessment quiz. Right? Griffin, what do you have, buddy? Um, the German army didn't, and they never fully took over the city. They did this because they thought they would be some resources in there, and they also thought that the people running around would be too low. Yeah, yeah, good job, good job. And we all know the perspectives of the people we just discussed and went over at the reading and how uh, they had to revert to eating dogs, cats, rodents, horses, even people, right? The body stacked up on the streets. They decided, oh, we'll just burn it up. Okay, this is how we're going to try to eliminate this here. The ground was frozen over. 
the only way to try to have some sort of hope, even with the ground frozen over, was uh, because uh, the transportation alley yeah, powers helping out with some sort of supplies, driving over these frozen over rivers and lakes. Okay. And uh, with the siege of Leningrad, Germany didn't fully invade it, right? They just surrounded it. They thought that they would lose a lot of resources and men if they were going to try to invade the city. What are you doing? Did you spill something? What'd you spill? You spilled something. Yeah. Yeah. Like one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to come around and check your bell ringer. That's ready to go. Well, here, I'll close this a while. So once I get done with the bell ringers here, you can work on this writing assignment. Those of you at home, submit your bell ringers. No fans or butts about it. I haven't submitted in. Uh, let me try to get it in today so that I can grade them over the weekend. That being said, writing assignment right here. Let me explain this for you guys real quick. Have your bell ringers ready in here. So we've discussed many battles, events, and uprising that occurred during World War II and even the buildup of the world conflict. At this moment, from what we already discussed in class, describe what you believe was the most impactful event of the Second World War. Please use detail within your response and answer in complete sentences. Eight to ten sentences. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. All right, so I have it as 20 points. It should be a grade booster, and it's just really your opinion. So use your notes. Use some of the information that we already went over. You have to refer back to vocab terms, bell ringers. Go ahead. And uh, by now, you should have an event that you're thinking in your mind, maybe that you think is the most impactful. Okay. So there you go. I'll let you guys work on that. You should have it. You should be able to get it done towards the end, by the end of class here. Those of you at home, please submit it. And give you great for it along with your bell ringers. All right.